Welcome to another video. We've got n factorial times n factorial equals 10 factorial. So what is m times n? Well, don't try to figure out what the answer is unless you know it. The best thing to do is to break down 10 factorial and see if we can find two numbers that are factorials that multiply each other. Well, that might sound confusing, but that's what we have to do. You have to find two factorial multiplications from all the factors of 10 factorial. And definitely, since you know m and n are multiplying each other to get 10 factorial, m must be a number less than 10, and n also must be less than 10. So you don't have so many guesses, right? You can only guess between 2 and 9 in either case. Let's get into the video. So what I would suggest in this problem is to write out 10 factorial and see what you can do. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, actually I want to do it here. I'm going to say that 10 factorial can be written as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 3 2 and 1. That's 10 factorial. Now remember that every factorial will have to build up, right? So my strategy in this case is to say this 10 factorial is the same thing as m factorial times n factorial, but we don't know what m factorial is, but one thing we're sure of is that, remember you can build your factorials from 1 up to the number or from the number all to one all the way to one so what we're going to do is every factorial has one so we're going to start from one and one now i'm going to go here i know that one times one can give me one right so i can decide to break everything down and go you see this two i can break two down because it's a prime number so i'm going to give that two to this guy but this n also needs a 2. So now I know these two numbers are gone. 3 is a prime number, right? I can break it down. So I got to give the 3 also to m. Four is not a prime number, but this guy is suffering. It doesn't have enough candidates yet. It needs a 2. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing you know what, this guy actually needs a 4. Maybe I should just put the 4 here. No, that's too much. You don't want to go too far because the numbers might not work out. So you want to start building here also. So this 4, oh no. I'm going to go here and say this 6 can be written as 2 times 3. So I'm going to strike this one out and call this 6, which is 2 times 3. So what candidates do I have left? I still have 4 and 5. So I'm going to put this 4 here. And then this 5, I think I'm going to put here since it's a prime number. But don't go too far because I need a 4 for this guy. And I see a 4 sitting here, right? Inside 8. Or maybe I should take, yeah, I'm going to take a 4 from here. Let's see, maybe. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I'm going to take the 4 from here. So this 4 is out. This 5 is out. They're both here. So if I take a 4 from here, I put it here, I'm going to have a 2 left. So what I have left here is 2. So let's just put a 2 here and cancel this out. It looks like there's no real math I'm doing. I'm just trying to rearrange the factors of 10 factorial. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay? Now, what else do I have? I got 2 here. I need a 5 here. Where can I get 5? I can get 5 from here. So if I take 5 away from here, I'm going to have 2 left. I'm going to put that 5 here. Okay, so what do we have left? We got 2, 2, 7, 9. Oh, the next number I need is 6. How do I generate 6? There's no more 6. 
but I get two times, I can take three out of this. Oh, everybody gets a six from here because this is gonna be 18, no, what's that? 36, right? So this is gonna be times six. If I take three from here, multiply it by two, I get six. Take three from here, multiply it by two, I get six. Okay, so this guy is gone, everybody here is gone. Who's standing? Seven is still standing. Okay, I can put that seven here and I've used up all the numbers. So, because I built from one up to that number, this number is seven factorial. Because I built from one to that number, this number is six factorial. That means that my n must be six and my m must be seven. And that's it. So mn must be 42. And that's, that's just it. There's, there's no, nothing else I could do about that. So I could say that 7 factorial times 6 factorial is equal to 10 factorial, which implies 7 equals m and 6 equals n, and then mn equals 7 times 6, which is equal to 42. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.